Hey, everyone, welcome to back. Here's some Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. We are finally going to jump into the infamous Iron Man era of Doctor Doom. There was a weird what? period where <laughs> Doctor Doom became Iron Man. What? Because if you read comics long enough, every character will become another character. Well, especially and, Iron Man, where they just put on the suit. And I mean, Iron that's Man, all. It, that's all it takes, right? It's very easy, yeah. comparatively. This is in a weird, tumultuous period of Marvel's history, where there was the all-new, all-different Marvel that dovetailed out of Secret Wars, mm. Mm -hmm. and then transitioned into Marvel Now, and. I don't have reverence for either of those periods, and I think a lot of people would agree. And I'm not saying that because I'm taking some side in some cockamamie culture war that the internet would love to jump into. I'm just saying, you know, there's not a lot of stuff for Sal <laughs> during that time. But uh, I did enjoy this. Really? And it, and it represented the like kind of end of Bendis at Marvel. Mm. It wasn't the last thing he did, but you could tell he was kinda done. And there's even a little bit of like lazy Bendis in here. And oh. I like this, so don't yeah. get me wrong, but it is a little lazy. I and mean, I remember- Dr. It Dr. Doom putting on the Iron Man suit is an inherently lazy concept. It, really, you so. think so? I mean, yeah, yes. <laughs> well, because it's just like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> he's already wearing armor. Also, because it's just coming out of Secret Wars, which is a Doctor Doom Centric event. Centric event, and that's like, and now, what if he was Iron Man? Well, I mean, literally, like, that is why Secret Wars pretty much destroyed Doctor Doom as a character. Mm. Because he was God. <laughs> right. What is he gonna do next? Rob a bank? He'll be Iron Man. I mean, that's the next thing he'll do. Yeah, that's worse than just being regular Doctor Doom again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Where right. you could kind of like, cleanse the palate. Yeah, and they did. They do that for like, for like five or 10 years. <laughs> no, saying. no, 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 see, by doing this, then you could be like, wait, Okay, so let's do this for a little bit, and then we'll go back to being regular Doctor Doom. And everybody will be like, "Oh, yay, back <laughs> yay, to normal, nothing cool. weird." All right. Yeah, that's true. You could also tell that Hickman, a, made no attempt to leave a roadmap for Marvel after Secret Wars was over, mm -hmm. but b, did not intend for Doctor Doom <laughs> to become Iron Man. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that wasn't part of the master plan. Uh, absolutely not. So the story opens with a flashback to. Bendis's Illuminati or the Cabal. You're I remember you proud he, of that? he called it that. No, he called it that. <laughs> I was gonna say in the you, trades. Yeah, okay. No, that I was remember a thing we that, talked about on the couch. I'm like, wait. Yeah, wait. Was that was us? that a real thing? That was a real thing that he jokingly referred to it oh. as. There's actually a name, and it's called the Cabal. Right. And we're just seeing like a moment when the Cabal got together, and of course Doctor Doom was a chair on the Cabal, mm. and so they're hanging out and they're waiting for Norman Osborn to show up. Presumably who's, who's he's in an Iron Patriot costume. Uh, the Hood, Loki when he was a woman, Emma Frost and Namor. I thought that might be Emma and Namor. Yes, mm. of course. And so uh, they're just waiting around for Norman Osborn, who is probably in charge of Hammer at this point, and is the Iron Patriot, and the Hood is like, hey, Doctor Doom, because the Hood is like a relatively new character at this point. I don't even know who point. that is. Yeah, he's come up a number of times because while he was invented by Brian K. Vaughn, Bendis is like, you made this? <laughs> I made this. <laughs> and just used him like to an upsetting degree. Just mm. constantly. I'm like, you are using that character like you own stock in that character. <laughs> and you don't. You didn't create him. This is what people could do. You could do that with my characters and I'd get money for it. Right, but no one wants to. <laughs> So well, I'm doing the thing that everyone should do. Th th that is true. Like during his new Avengers run, he was like, hey, here's a story. Doctor Strange is not the Sorcerer Supreme anymore. Who's gonna be Sorcerer Supreme now? Go. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Um, I'll do the story. <sighs> The Hood is named Parker Robbins. He's just some douche. Like, he is a hood in his own right. And he one day acquires this mystical hood that is attached to a cloak. And it is also possessed by a demon. And so it allows him to teleport, but also infects him as a demon. Right. So there's as, that going on. As it him. does. And he tried to become the kingpin of crime because kingpin was taken down and he did it by being a Bendis character. And I know he's a Brian K. Vaughn character, but he became a Bendis character through the continued and insistent usage by Bendis, where he would just meet with people and be like, I'm the new kingpin of crime. And it's like, since that's not an official title, I can just <laughs> say that that's me. Because I don't know if you've noticed, I have two guns. Like that's, his, that's his move. 
But how many barrels do they have? They only have one barrel, unfortunately. <laughs> so they're very easy to acquire. But, you know, he made moves. That's all I could say, you know? Okay. There's, a, there's an Avengers story that Bendis wrote in which he tries to acquire the Infinity Gauntlet, you know? Mm. It, it, it's like if a intrepid, douchey human from our reality went to the Marvel Universe and then found this cloak and was like, sweet, I'm gonna take shit over. <laughs> and it's like, no, you're not. And so he's but talking I'm gonna to, sit at the table with the cabal. But I got invited. Why is it, where is Magneto? Why right. is it Emma Frost and not Magneto? Well, because Magneto- and where is Red Skull? Like where are the people I know who they are? Because Red Skull was either dead or another person at that time. This is the hand we're dealt, I'm sorry. I know. If you want to see that, we'll do Acts of Vengeance one day. That's the one you want to see, where it's like, oh, that's everybody. Yes. And not people like the Hood. Mm. But anyway, the Hood's like, hey, Dr. Doom, we, 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 you know, since we're just hanging out and clearly we're peers, uh, obviously we both have hoods, you know. Uh, let me ask you a question. I heard that you went to hell and fought a demon. And Doom will not acknowledge him. And yeah, everyone's like, where did like, you hear that from? Right. I guess where from, did you hear that from? I guess from, from the demon. Right. Yes. And that's, mm. well, and I think it's. And the it's, demon's like, hey. I, I, I don't know if it's the demon or if it is that Parker Robbins wants to be excised from the demon and he heard through the grapevine that Doom beat a demon and so therefore he's trying to get information about how one could get rid of a demon. Who? Would have told him. Would have told him. There right. was only two people yeah. on that entire mission and neither of them Dr. would have Doom, shared that information and dr strange is never talking to anyone about this right be like, oh. i assume that doc must have flapped his mouth at some point at some illuminati meeting or something mm. or some lady okay yeah it was just what they call pillow talk, <laughs> pillow talk baby. yeah yeah the night nurse told everybody so anyway he finally badgers doom enough to go yes i bait a demon shut up <laughs> and hood is just like yeah okay but like how though and so doom just flashes him and they're like, whoa, you just killed the hood. Nice. And Doom's like, I didn't kill him. I just sent him away. Why didn't you kill him? Professional courtesy. <laughs> Fair enough. So we're just seeing like, this is who From Doom- one hood to another. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what Doom does. It's like, a, it's like an establishment. Like this is who Doom was before Secret Wars. And here is who Doom is now with his face fixed. And he's, he's got- like, I'm hideous. No, he's why not. Is his, why is he wearing the mask? If his face is fixed. No, he was wearing the mask. That was a flashback. Oh, there's a flashback. I no, see. no, no. Okay. He's not wearing the now mask. Now we're cutting back to... Okay. Yeah. So then we see this character who's a classic Avengers villain called Diablo. Oh, okay. And Diablo is essentially a second-rate D-list villain. Or if it's like the 60s and 70s, he's a C-list villain. <laughs> and oh. he captured Maria Hill, then head of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he is monologuing at her about how no one takes him seriously anymore. It's all about these new flashy characters. Nobody thinks about Diablo. <laughs> but now that I have captured the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm going to force feed you some truth serum. You're gonna give me codes to the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarriers, and I'm gonna make some serious waves. And then Victor Von Doom walks in and he's like, hey Diablo, listen, I'm a good guy now, and I'm gonna kick your ass. And Diablo's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> And so Doom proceeds to who conjure this, who a Who is this beautiful man in front of me? <laughs> exactly. And Doom was like, thank you. That will keep you from dying. <laughs> so Doom, of course, is a master sorcerer. And so he whips up a couple of magical uh, spells that he conjures to fight Diablo. Diablo himself conjures a couple of little demon guys to fight Doom. And Doom dispatches them just as quickly. Then Doom flashes Diablo and seemingly kills him. Doom seemingly kills a lot of established, <laughs> long-standing Marvel characters, only for someone to go, he's okay, uh, later on in the book. I'm amazed that it doesn't happen in someone else's book, but I digress. So Doom has defeated Diablo and then proceeds to meet up with Maria Hill and go, I'm not gonna call anybody and I'm not gonna tell anybody because this is horribly embarrassing for you and it would essentially destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. Because if, if word got out that Diablo captured the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. and could have compromised it to a, such a, to such a degree that you know, we haven't seen it since Secret Invasion, <laughs> no one would believe in or trust S.H.I.E.L.D. ever again. And I'm a good guy now. Is, just, just wanna say, is it established 
that he's a good guy before this, or is this like yes. what? He's he's oh, okay. a, well in in Iron Man he is trying to be a good guy and has teamed up with Iron Man like real Tony Stark before okay. Civil War Two. So here we're just gonna accept that that is yeah you thing. you are getting this because of how awesome it was in the Iron Man book. Okay. So then he frees Maria Hill from like the chewing gum she's trapped in, <laughs> and she's like um what the fuck. So that's that's that awesome cold open. Do we get any explanation of how she got captured by Diablo? Nope. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to Cambridge, where we meet up with another character that Ben has created called Dr. Amara Pereira. And Amara Pereira came up in his Iron Man book. And so Amara Pereira is a super genius, normal scientist who has created a cure for the X gene. <sighs> That's not a normal scientist. No. But <laughs> well, she's, it's a super scientist yes. who doesn't wear a suit. That's right. But she's not going to like put it in a gun and go shooting the X-Men. But no. Do people, but people know about it. Though. No. she Only mm. Iron Man and Doom knew about it. Okay. And mm. she's like, I've kept the secret to myself. But they knew that she figured it out because like they're tracking her or whatever. Because mm -hmm. they're like, we keep an eye on all the smart people. And so Doom has taken an interest in Amara Pereira. And of course, uh, Iron Man did too and tried to bang her. And they went on a couple of dates, but it didn't go anywhere. And then he got punched into a coma. So Doom <laughs> is now put a like. Damper on the relationship. It's true. So Doom's like, hey. And she's like, oh, no, it's you. And that's, that is their whole relationship. It's him going, like, hello, Amara Pereira. I am interested in you as a person, and I'm here to talk to you or at you, mostly. Is he a good guy because his face is better? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. His, just... Well, but uh, kind of. Because at the end of Secret Wars, you know, Doom made an insane new reality that made him God and Reed Richards' wife his woman. Mm -hmm. So, like, he's a dick. Right. And despite that, Richards put him in a castle in Latveria with a fixed face. So, like, maybe his heart grew three sizes <laughs> that day and he realized <laughs> that there is good in the world. I guess it, it was better that he went this way as opposed to being, like, Richards cured me and then... Left. Left. Like, he was the bigger man and left. Yeah. I'm going to go literally insane. <laughs> I mean, I would have loved that. Just him being like, no. I mean, the easier, maybe the easier idea is that Doom's like, I was God, I was God. Like, he's just scrambling to get back to where he was. Mm. But that's boring. Because, like, either he loses or he doesn't. And then if, you, if he does win, that's derivative. And if he loses, that's predictable. So it's like, what do you do? Instead, he's like, oh, I'm a good guy now. Could there be, is there any element of like, when I was a, when I was God, yeah. I came to like understand like, no, how complicated and important like, I, that you know, comes up. Things are, and I, I realize like I need to like not be a douche. It, it kind of, it, it, that comes up. Like it's like up being a parent, you know, like I got respond, this sense yeah, of responsibility. I realized, oh my God, I'm not the only one in the world. You right. Know? No, no. Uh, <laughs> but he does reference Secret Wars, and he talks about how he was God, and he explains that to Pereira later, because he mm. won't leave her alone. He has no idea what I was God, down. you know. I don't know if you know this. Right. Yeah, I mean, kind sure. of. So Doom goes to Tony Stark's holographic clone, and he's like, mm. hey, I'm going to be Iron Man. And Stark's like, please don't be Iron Man. That is not what I want. But I'm already Iron Man. So Doom flies at the camera triumphantly like Superman at the end of the Dick Donner movie <laughs> in his awesome new, much less exciting, gray-toned, green-lit Doctor Doom Iron Man armor, or infamous Iron Man armor, mm. when we see that he is being monitored by two characters, one of whom is off panel, the other one is dead center, and this one dead center is looking over a cauldron, and it's Doctor Doom's mom, now alive again. And she's like, oh, this is very interesting, double, double, boil and trouble. Because <laughs> she was a witch, you see. I don't know anything about Doom's mom. All you need to know is she was a witch, and Doctor Doom went to hell with Doctor Strange to fight Mephisto to get her soul out of hell. Oh, uh, okay, right, 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 right. Right? I mean, that's all Bendis knows about her. <laughs> so that's all you have to know. Right, right, okay. What? What? That, that's enough of a hook. Also, Ben Grimm is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and he interrogated Pereira after uh, Doom left. So then uh, <laughs> Ben goes to the Latvian Embassy where he just intimidates and bullies a bunch of people who work there to tell him where Doctor Doom is. Because of course, as the way that Ben Grimm looks at this, and I, I get it, but I don't like how Bendis writes Ben Grimm, uh, but I get the motivation behind it, is that uh, Ben Grimm just kind of uh, appeared one day on Earth 
and his his, his best friends are dead and Doctor Doom is Iron Man. Mm. And he's like, that sucks. So he right. goes and joins S.H.I.E.L.D. He's up to something. Yes, and so he joins S.H.I.E.L.D. presumably so that he can have authority to push over priceless vases in the Latverian <laughs> embassies. <laughs> that's Lat uh, Latverian sovereign territory. He doesn't have any authority to do anything No, there. but it's S.H.I.E.L.D., so that's actually international. And <laughs> that's a, right, they can do whatever they, they want, whatever they I want. guess. Because they're a fascist organization. <laughs> so in Bolivia, we meet up with the Mad Thinker, who's another D-list character that Bendis can kill off, but doesn't, <laughs> but it looks like he does, uh, in which Mad Thinker, again, he's part of the Intelligentsia, which is a group of evil supervillain geniuses, and uh, Doom shows up and he's like, hey man, Doom mucks with like an invention by the Mad Thinker, and he's like, this is really smart and cool. You're really smart and cool. Don't be a bad guy. And Mad Thinker's like, oh my god, Doctor Doom went straight. I never thought I'd see the day because that's kind of a terrible idea. <laughs> and so they fight, and he, uh, Mad Thinker, dispatches some robots. Doctor Doom beats them, and you can see the pattern here because that's what Doctor Doom is going to do throughout Infamous Iron Man. Is he goes to people that he used to either team up with or would know the the addresses for, and then goes, "Hi, I'm Victor Von Doom," and they go, "Oh crap, Doctor Doom's here. You're a dick," and he's like, "Yes, I am." Becomes the Infamous Iron Man, and then kills them. Is he collecting people? No, that would be an idea. So anyway. Dan, like making his own cabal since we started with it? Right, that would make sense and it would actually be kind of poetic. Uh, instead, no, the cabal is there to remind you of another book that Bendis would get residuals on if you buy. So <laughs> Doom leaves and then goes and visits uh, Amara Pereira again because she's the key to all of this. Uh, not because she knows anything or does anything, but rather because I think Bendis just wants to get this character going. We gotta get Amara Pereira working. That's right. <laughs> and if Amara Pereira is not on the page, then people need to be asking each other or themselves, where is Amara Pereira? So Amara Pereira is walking home in England and uh, she thinks she hears something. She shoots the person that she thinks she hears behind her and it's what? Victor Von Doom. And he's like, that was mean, don't do that. And so she's <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, I should get you to a hospital. And he's like, no, it's fine, I'll just use magic and fix it. And she's like, well, do you want to come into my apartment? And so they go into her apartment. What? That's right. Because everyone is even happening. That's this book. He and should so, be like, if he's a good guy, he should be like, I'm sorry, you shot me? I'm right. calling the police? Yeah. You're a danger to society. Exactly. Because I literally did nothing to warrant being shot. Well, I mean, okay. Normally that's true. But if you are Dr. Doom, Right, and Dr. Doom is behind you, and he's just like, hi, you want some free ice but cream? But he's not even dressed like Dr. Doom, so how does she even know he's Dr. Doom? Right? And how does she even recognize him? him? It's not like he gives off like a Doom vibe. No. Does he give off a Doom vibe? I mean, he must, right? I mean, <laughs> so, uh, he was, I just felt this like malevolent presence behind me. I don't know. Exactly. I decided to just shoot it. Right? And I'm either a great shot or a bad one. Yes. Mm. So they talk in her apartment, and essentially he's just there for no good reason whatsoever. And then she reveals that she talked to Ben Grimm, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he's like, oh no. And then Ben Grimm smashes through the wall. So the thing engages Doom, and Doom like fires a like, blast from his now suddenly uh, forming armor. Right, it's coming and out of his skin or whatever. Then the it's book nanotech. ends, and right. we need to go to some other scene. So does he let's... fire a thing, or does he have like a shield? Like, uh, it no, looks like a little bubble. Yeah, well, because Doom has an armor that he built that is both technologically based and magic based. This character, this unseen character off screen, is like, "Hey, Cynthia, uh, you you might want to know that your 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 son is in trouble." And so she goes back to her cauldron to check it out. Pereira is aghast, and then she awakens in a bed in another place, and that place is Switzerland. And uh, how is she in Switzerland? Well, let's go back, let's go back. Because of course, Doom sent her there, and himself there, and he's meditating, and he's using magic to repair the armor that was damaged in his fight with the thing. What? The fight that we don't get to see? That's right. Yeah, okay. okay. Because if you've seen one, you see them all. The colors on this book are really good. Yes, they are. That's because Matt Hollingsworth did them. <laughs> yeah, I like them quite a bit. Uh, yeah, no, I, I really like the art in this story. It, it, it really grounds it, and it needs it. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, so it's insane? Yes. But it's also frustratingly dull, mm. because every scene between Doom and Pereira are death. <laughs> because neither of them has any chemistry or any presence. Mm. Because Doom is not being fun Doom. Right. And Pereira is nobody. 
<laughs> Which this panel is the perfect one to look at while you're saying that. Cause she's like, oh. <laughs> well, because she is like, an unwilling doing? participant in everything that happens to her throughout the story. Right. And is she like a ride along character? Is that what she's supposed I to mean, be? I think so. But also, Ben is really needs her to start working again. So, uh, <laughs> what is. Right, what, what is, is what happening? Is his, like, what is Doom doing? Right. Like, what what is his driving force? To, this plot is just like... I think the Ooh. idea is that he wants to do good, but he's so bad at it that he's like, all scattershot. I, he proceeds to explain on three non-consecutive occasions <laughs> that he wants to use the, like, knowledge of the criminal element that he has amassed over his long career to the advantage of the good guys. And so that's why, like, you'll see him occasionally check in with a villain and then defeat them. Right. I believe what's happening, Ethan, is that he's waiting for the story to get going. Yes. Yeah. Like, he's just existing until uh, Bendis decides the rest of the plot will happen to him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, Doom and Pereira talk, and she's basically like, what do you do? Like, why am I in this place? Like, why did you take me with you? Why did you ruin my life? And ruin he's like... Ruin her life? Well, be yeah. yeah, because... It's been like a day, man. I know, but... You invented I was... a cure for the X gene. <laughs> Yeah, but I kept it to myself. Yeah, but I'm a good person. Okay. I didn't t I didn't transport anyone to Switzerland or okay. wherever this is. Yeah, or Sweden. blow up my apartment because he's like, oh, uh -huh. your apartment's destroyed. Like we ruined that place. You yeah, can't. There's even... nowhere to go back to. That's what he says. <sighs> and so uh, she's just like, why did you do this? And he's like, because we're connected. And she's like, no, we're not. Ew. And he's like, no, we kind of are. That's a gross thing to say. Don't say that. Yeah. So she's like, what is your problem? And she's she, like, I haven't had a whole lot of really strong relationships This in is my very life. true. You're gonna so gonna, I just picked you. You're yeah. just going to kind of need to help me through this. Oh, yeah. my God. I just glommed onto you. That's something now that he does throughout. In this book, he will also do that to another woman where oh it's God. like, oh, I've just picked a woman out of a hat and I'll name her because I'm Bendis and I need to set that up. But I didn't plan on leaving. So... She, uh, she proceeds to ask him, like... This is, this is where... I, and I'm glad he didn't, because it would have not worked out. But, uh -huh. you know, like, on the Moon Knight run, he has, like, a therapist? Yes. Like, this... Um, no. This Doom could use a therapist. I would have loved that book. Mm. The book of Doom on the couch with yeah. a therapist is way more fun than Doom just winging it. Even, so, even, like, you could use the Iron Man stuff where he's, like, flying around and then, like... The AI he's like, is talking I'm having a crisis. He calls up his therapist. He's flying around <laughs> in the armor. Yeah. And he's like, I need to talk to someone. Yep. And they're like, you can't just call me whenever. Right. Like, Wouldn't it be is fun? this a true emergency? Are you going to kill he's yourself? Like, I'm like, doomed. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then they have this conversation where it's like, what they're talking about mirrors what he's doing in the yeah. action. So, Doom yeah. proceeds to explain Secret Wars because, for the most part people don't remember it because they either weren't a superhero and so they weren't like living in a fun tie-in book <laughs> or the world was ended and so now they're back. Right, so and normal people don't know. Exactly, and only happened. a handful of superheroes remember because only a handful of superheroes actually were saved by the life raft before the ultimate universe destroyed the main universe. Right. Which only includes characters that had movie equivalents, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, so This is so, super fun. Isn't it? So he's gonna, he's about to make her think that he's crazy. I mean, if she doesn't already, right. right? But like, also she is talking to Dr. Doom and yeah. she at least saw a couple of times on TV him going, Richards, in a green cape. So, I mean, I feel like <laughs> I'd buy it, you know? Yeah. Especially if Galactus, ex literally just the concept of a giant purple planet eating guy. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, one time, um, real you know the multiverse? You know, like there's a version of you that's a cowboy? Well. <laughs> <laughs> All of them all smashed into each other, and the last one is one where you were born in the 2000s, and you're sexier, and you were drawn by Bagley, and that's sm that smashed into us, and now you're dead, and now you're back, and it's thanks to my arch rival who was whipping up realities attached to molecule men and just throwing them into the sky. So yeah, you're welcome. Like what? <laughs> okay, that's no crazier than any other thing yeah. that happened. But he basically is like, I used to be God, and I failed. Like, I was God. I got everything I ever wanted, and I got to be in charge of the universe and reality, and I failed at it. That's mm. really good looking, too. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, that is. And so, okay, here so I am. That's a good reason for him to be good. Yes. Right? Like, I did it, well, and it didn't work. Everything that I believed that I was destined to have came true, and that was unfulfilling and wrong. Right. So perhaps the opposite right. is the way to well, go. Well, also, there's just no, no point in even doing that. Well, Right? Like, I know where it leads, and it's, it doesn't work for yeah. me. Yeah, I've had the ultimate Doom so I, story, and I yeah. can't be Doctor Doom so ever I, again. I guess I could do, like, nothing, right. or I could do something maybe opposite. Yes. Yeah, okay. So she won't let it go. She's like, no, like, you're bad. You're a bad guy. <laughs> 
Right. And you invented the cure for uh, mutants. Right. So you're the bad guy, actually. <laughs> I'm not saying. If, I'm not saying he's not a bad guy. Yeah, I am no, saying. Here's all. Do it on purpose. All I'm saying is you, you created a moral quandary. Anyway, so she's begging to be sent home, and so he teleports her away, and he's just left to his own devices. Uh, the thing goes to Latveria, which Doom got Latveria back, and then was like, this is not for me anymore, so he left. And he left it in charge of, like, the head of the military, so it became a wasteland, and it's like an allegory <laughs> for Iraq or whatever. So uh, the Latveria is depressed and destroyed, and the castle was shelled, and so there's nothing left of what we want job, Doom. from, you know, that Doom and Fantastic Four. well, like oh. leaving. Oh, I know, yeah, no, and he- I'm a he's, hero! He's, he's, he's <laughs> so long, whoosh! We try to make time with this genocidal doctor. Uh, what about that power vacuum that you left behind? What? He explains his naivete later, which is like, you were God, man. How did you not know that, like, if you put a military general in charge of your country, it's not gonna go well. Like, don't you know history, aren't you a doctor? So, Ben Grimm goes to the scene of no crime. He's just like, well, I'm here. And he's talking to like Maria Hill or whatever. And she's like, why are you in Latveria? He's like, I don't know. I'm just trying to get ideas. <laughs> so while he's walking through the Great Hall or the what used to be the Great Hall, his rocks start falling off. But there's no Ben Grimm under there. It's just like weird, mushy flesh. Oh, And he's oh. like, what's happening? And Cynthia Von Doom reveals herself. And she's like, so you're one of those people who gives my son such a hard time. <laughs> you 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 bully my son. Yes. Okay. So never mind that. That's more interesting. So let's what? go back to the helicarrier where uh, Maria Hill is having an existential quandary about how she was defeated by Diablo and then saved by Doctor Doom when she gets a call that Doctor Doom is in holding. She's like, what? So she goes down in her uh, shield regalia with a garrison to confront Doctor Doom, who is now dressed like a regular person, and she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I just wanted you to know that like, I'm a good guy now, and uh, I'm gonna like, I I'm gonna do some good stuff. Like, hey, listen, hey, did you is, know? This is my uh, weekly good guy check. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. I'm a good guy. I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm like a program, and... <laughs> you're, part of the, you're part of my steps. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't undo everything you did. And he's like, yeah, but like, you can't stop me. What? Lady, he, like, he, if he's willing to do this, I know it's not going to undo what he did, but right. like, yeah. it's better than him not doing it. She gets it. to the program later. Well, okay. actually, she well, doesn't, but the new head of Shield does because Marvel now happens in between these 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 six issues. Oh, what? So, yeah, that's right. All new, all different becomes Marvel now between the first six issues and the last six issues. And so uh, all of Shield gets like reorganized. <laughs> but uh, whatever. He's like, would you do me a favor and please tell Ben Grimm to like not look for me anymore because it's like really annoying because he's really good at it mm. and he makes me sad so please stop <laughs> not like he makes me sad because he's like when such I a pathetic look, monster when i look at him i feel really bad <laughs> right no about it, it's more like it reminds the fact him that of, he is alive <laughs> yes and how he can never like be intimate with a woman without a long conversation uh, like and you know how hideous he is right and, yeah you know. how he'll never be fixed no it, it's how he's no barely hair. even a human being he's at just, this point he bothers him he tasks him <laughs> Right. And she's like, no, I, I don't even know where Ben Grimm is right now. And then one of the agents goes, uh, he's in Latveria, ma'am. And she's like, you're fired. <laughs> you can't tell evil villains he's where right our here. agents are. <laughs> so then Doom's like, thanks. And he gets back into his armor and he leaves. Oh, you are so fired. Because this is the flashback, you see. What? what? That to whole thing was finding out that Ben Grimm is in Latveria being attacked by Cynthia Von Doom. Why couldn't that just be a thing that's happening right now? Because we gotta we gotta keep things moving. Gotta, gotta it's keep, still moving. Keep you what? unsteady on yeah. your feet, so that's you can't not, know what's happening. I mean, I, I couldn't. You could have. You could have yeah. read that like it was just happening. It, it, I he know. Why? He's magic. He I can know. teleport. I know. So I, anyway, no, but he's in an Iron Man suit, so he has to fly. It yeah. Takes a little bit longer. So infamous Iron Man arrives in Latveria, and he sees like it's ruined. And there's a couple of panels that like depict it in its heyday and how like beautiful it used to be. Or he's like, whose fault is this? R right. Does Yours. He, was, does he not read the news? Did he not know that right. it was falling you apart? You get like podcasts in there. You no, know I got a like, filter for Latveria. I don't want to be tempted. That's true. <laughs> So he encounters like three children with AK-47s, you know, and he's like, Ugh. he takes them away from him and he goes, he's go like, to school. He's like, come do you serve? Right. right. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> sorry. I fell right back into it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, he takes their guns and he goes, go to school. And they go, what school? And he's like, ooh, I don't like that. Okay. So then he proceeds to get attacked by the military of Latveria. And he's like, okay, 
<laughs> so he goes to the army base, which just looks like an American army base, but whatever, it's Liberian. Mm. And uh, he proceeds to call down General Karadik. What? And, uh, yeah, new character created by Bendis. But uh, Karadik somehow managed to find the Doom bots and then reprogram them. And so the Doom bots are t attacking infamous Iron Man. He's like, they're mine. And he turns them off. He faces Karadik. Karadik's like, what are you doing here? Are you, are you, are you here for real? Are you here for good? Are you you're moving back in? <laughs> and he's like, you were in charge, man. I put you in charge. This is horrible. And he's like, you left. And he's like, that's not an excuse for you being a bad leader. And he's like, you. while we're talking, I Googled a, a Latverian citizen who would be the perfect leader for this country. And her name is Angela Crore. So go find Angela Crore and then make her the new leader of Latveria. And it's like, yeah, you know what he's going to do? He's going to go find her and he's going to freaking kill her behind the chemical sheds. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you mean you identified a potential challenge to his authority? Exactly! Oh, one endorsed by the former monarch. <laughs> I mean, I listen, if this guy was used to having Doom in charge, he might not, because he might be like... Well, you know, that's what, the he, I know he's a that's good thing. guy. No, he should but, fear that Doom will kill yes, him if he, he hurts him. him. Yes, but like, okay, these are all valid points, but... They're happening, it's like Schrodinger's problem, because like, those are great points that should absolutely be addressed and be part of the narrative. But also, Bendis wants to make this an allegory for Western occupation of the third world. Right. And so, you can't have both! <laughs> right, we need this guy to act like someone who wouldn't believe that Doom is like all-powerful and could Yeah, because like, if he thought for... that Doom would kill him for being a bad leader, then the country wouldn't be shitty. Right. So the problem is it just doesn't work if Doom exists. Yes! And is paying attention. It only would work if Doom wasn't paying attention. Or yes. Like was off world or yeah. whatever. Right. And this guy had reason to think that like, oh, Doom's not coming back. Exactly. And I think but Doom that... just came back. So now that has to go out the window. Exactly. But it won't. No. <laughs> okay. So then he leaves and he goes to the castle and he finds like rocks in a trail. And then finds Ben <laughs> and he's Grimm. like, okay, either he's falling apart or he is having a bowel problem. Right. <laughs> so he's just like, hey, is Grimm. Is this part of you or something you left behind on purpose? Right. It's like, this looks is not... Like, looks like you shouldn't have come here, Ben. <laughs> exactly. So he's coming apart and he's like, I knew when I walked in, who is here? <laughs> Hello, mother. And so she reveals herself. Hmm. And he's like, you're not my mother because my mother is dead. But that all happens after... The flash forward in which Ben Grimm is being treated in a shield hospital on the helicarrier. Uh, he's fine, by the way. Uh, rocks aren't falling off, and he's explaining to uh, Maria Hill what he witnessed while he was there before he was teleported to their custody. Uh, and what he witnessed was that interaction I just described, in which he's like, how dare you put on the visage of my mother because I know she's in heaven because Doctor Strange and I worked really hard on that. It's a classic Marvel story. And if you'd read it, you'd know. And so uh, they fight for a minute. Well, but maybe this is a clue that she's not it sh that. Yeah, right, it could be. So she proceeds to explain to him after he chills out that she never took an interest in him while he was being Doctor Doom because he shamed her by being an evil villain. But now that he's decided to turn over a new leaf- I walked into hell for you. Right? Uh, yeah, that, and, 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 and yes, and I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Now! She's like, by the way, can I have the number for that guy you were with? <laughs> because I'm hot and so was he. Doom's and like, no. Absolutely not under no circumstances. <laughs> But now that he's an Iron Man, she's like, oh, you're now you're worth talking to. Right. Now you're not a disappointment. Exactly. And he's like, oh. I was a god. That's cool, I guess. Right. Remember when I was god? Hey. Yeah, I remember when you fucked How come he didn't resurrect her when he was god? Well, because if she was in heaven, how could she be any better place than there? Well, yeah, but he true. But yeah, but then he could... That, but if she were there, then she could see how good he was doing. Well, he does, he, but look at me now, Ma. No, I'm God. He just wanted to save her. He's That's like, true. I did that. That's true. Check. So anyway, she's like, I'm going to kill this this thing on the floor. And he's like, no. What? If you if you want to... If, if you want me to do better, then you got to be better too. You, you send him back to where he came she's from or like, whatever. She's like, she's like, like Emperor palpatine him. Yeah, no, yeah. she's 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 fixing <laughs> oh, his she's rocks. Fixing him. Oh, she's, oh, she's fixing on him. Emperor Palpatine. Yes. Oh. Why is she lecturing him about being a bad guy, and then she's just going to casually kill 
the thing? Yeah. Like, what is she? I right. I don't understand. Like, what's her deal? She's a mess because <laughs> no one should be talking about Cynthia Von Doom. So she sends him away, and uh, then we catch up with right. the present. And so uh, he's Maria like, Hill's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. And he's like, I need to go back to Latveria. And she's like, we never left. Like, we parked the, car- the carrier over you. Oh. And so she's like, thank you, by the way, because. We couldn't send shield agents into Latveria and fix it, you know, bring democracy and freedom to Latveria, uh, because it technically was a sovereign nation and, like, we can't just invade sovereign nations. But with a shield agent under attack in Latveria, I could now send boots on the ground and we could actually, like, do some shit. Uh, (laughs) Meanwhile, in Cambridge, don't forget Pereira, she is being interrogated by shield agents, and while she is not answering their questions about where Doom is or what he wants, uh, she is being handed her uh, termination papers. Because, you know, Cambridge is getting a lot of unwanted attention from super people and uh, shadow organizations. And they gave her a a literal pink slip, a thing that no one knows what that is. (laughs) (laughs) But Bendis does. So she's like, my life is over. And then after the shield agents leave, Doom shows up in a regular outfit. And he's like, hey. And she's like, you ruined my life. You ruined my life. And he's like, I'm sorry. I will fix this. And she's like, please don't. Stay away from me. Don't do anything. Don't fix anything. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm I'm having a real bad day. My mom is, is not dead anymore. And she like thinks I'm a major disappointment and only now suddenly he's taking interest in me. And uh, like, I'm not your therapist. Right. Get out of here. Yeah, and she's just <laughs> I like. I pretty clear, I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah, right. You're like a stalker, get out of here. Yes, and she's like, please leave me alone. I can't fix you. I can't even fix my own life. Yeah. I barely even know you. Yeah. This is weird, so then stop he, being weird. So then he, Iron Man's up and he flies away. This is just a series, this whole series, just like a series of Doom interacts with a character. That character tells him that he's an asshole and will never change. He then puts on his Iron Man costume and leaves. Uh, so then we see Cynthia go back to her lair and uh, the, 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 the shadowy character who was talking to her off panel is like, how'd it go? And she's like, not well, gotta tell you. We fought and then he like cried and flew away. <laughs> and who is it but Ultimate Reed Richards, the maker? Oh. And he's like holding her like they're banging. So you're like, oh my God. Oh, he's gonna take that well. That's right? effed up. And I'm like, I kinda love that. This is when I was like, when I was reading this book as it came out, I was like, yes, this is so great. Like, because can you imagine the reaction of Doom being like, my mom is getting fucked by Reed Richards. <laughs> No. If they get married, he's my stepdad. No! 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 <laughs> and then it's like, no, he's she's being banged by a younger, hotter, alternate version of Reed Richards. It's not even your Richards. It's a different Richards. Better? Worse? I, uh, I don't even know what that is. But it's just it's kind of fun because it's like it's the maker. And it's like, oh man, the maker? What? <laughs> That's kind of fun. You know it's the maker because, you know, Maleev isn't like adhering to any kind of like character sheet or anything, but you know he's he, because he's using lowercase letters. That's what the Ultimate Universe is all about, uh. or or Marvel during the two thousands. But no, let's not worry about that. Let's check in with in the present day the Wizard, oh, the member of the Intelligentsia, and another superpowered character that could easily be beaten by Doom. And Wizard is talking to Modok over like a video phone, and Wizard's like. We need to reform the Intelligentsia and fight Doom because Doom is picking us off one by one. It is a mess. And Modok's like, I completely believe you because he's standing right behind you. I gotta go. Pew! Uh. <laughs> so Doom reveals himself and so Wizard and Doom fight and rinse and repeat. Except Wizard uses his like floating discs that he uses because Wizard has these floating discs that he invented that he like sure. flies on. <laughs> and he slips them under Doom's feet while he engages them in conversation and then just fires him into the air. In the middle of their interaction, Doom just kind of strokes off for a minute and suddenly sees this insane display of shit. Some kind of machine? Yes, he sees like a technological marvel that could not exist in today's world or today's world as today's corporations will allow it to be as he describes it later in the story. Nice little (laughs) social commentary there from Bendis. Uh, But uh, yeah, Doom sees this vision and he's like, a what? And he's so distracted that Wizard's able to punch him and leave. Uh, Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Cynthia and Reed, the maker, are watching Doom's uh, defeat. And uh, they're just talking about this clandestine plan that the two of them are engaged in, which also includes Doom. So it's like, Mm -hmm. oh no, Cynthia isn't just interested in Doom for, you know, catching up. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, He must be part of the machinations of the maker. Right. And Cynthia is caught up in it somehow. 
Uh, so when Doom finally awakens, he is faced by the new leader of S.H.I.E.L.D., who is Sharon Carter. And Sharon Carter is like, you're under arrest. And he's like, no, I'm not. He's like, and who are you? Right, yes. Wh I'm sorry. And, 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 and when did this happen? <laughs> Was and like, how much time just passed between when I was asleep and when I was awake? It feels like it was like 30 minutes, but uh... And it could have been like a month. Yeah, yeah, no, Maria Hill was fucking up. We got rid of her. Uh-huh. So, Off panel. Yeah, so she's gone, and Sharon Carter's in, in charge. And uh, then we meet up with Riri Williams, who hears that Doom is uh, arrested by Sharon Carter, and so she wants to get involved because uh, Bendis wants Riri Williams in the book. We see Wizard meet up with more of his rogues, like more fellow rogues. Mm. And it's just a, a, a smorgasbord of references. They, like, the, 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 the villains are in a business called Herbie's, which you would have assumed is a bar, but it looks like a Borders. And so, <laughs> isn't that, is that a reference to? The robot that was a like so a servant Four. for the Fantastic yeah. Four. Can't put that in there. Right? It's talking about the Fantastic well, Four. I, I think these are Bendis being like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm going to use Ultimate Reed Richards and uh, Herbie. So the hood is there. Oh, okay. And remember the hood from the beginning? He yeah. got flashed. He did. But that was like a while ago. That was pre-Secret Wars. Oh, he got, he got better? Yeah. Well, he only got sent to India. Whoa. But uh, the hood is like, dude, this is a dope opportunity for us. He's nothing if not entrepreneurial. He's like, okay. So yes, does it look bad? That, like, Doom is trying to attack us and kill us. Yes. But if we all, right now, get together, work together, I'm in charge, and you guys work for me. Naturally. And we mm -hmm. kill Doom, we could run crime, and I could be the kingpin. It's like, that we did that story already. And he's like, yeah, but I like that story, and I haven't really gotten to see that story come to fruition. And so while Hood God is going it. through his pitch, Doom smashes through the window <laughs> and just beats literally everybody. And uh, <laughs> the Wrecker gets away. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> we know he's formidable. <laughs> That's right. So the Wrecker gets picked up by S.H.I.E.L.D. and he's like, I want, like, I don't know, Asylum, Sanctuary, I'm, I just don't want to get killed by Doctor Doom. Everybody died. He killed everybody. I saw them. He, he was just flashing them and they were just, they were just vaporized. <laughs> so they're, so they're grilling for information and uh, we find out why Wrecker was left but everybody else got flashed and it's because Doom wanted one person to, you know, spread, spread his, his legend. legend. Yeah, okay. And he's like, tell everyone that I'm coming for them. <laughs> and hell's coming with me. <laughs> and, and also, be a good guy now. Like, I could do it, you can too. Change your ways. That's my sales pitch. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> and so, they're like, that doesn't, that's so stupid. <laughs> also, they're not dead. They're all arrested and we have them. So he flashed them into, like, prison? Yeah. Or he flashed them into unconsciousness and then ah. S.H.I.E.L.D. picked them up. It's very unclear. All that matters is S.H.I.E.L.D. has them. Right. And also the Wrecker. And they made him feel like an idiot. Because then they told him that, like, he shouldn't be afraid. So then uh, Doom goes to visit Ben Grimm in his apartment. And uh, he basically is like, I get why you're so mad, Ben. Because I, I miss them too. Mm. And I, I wish they were here. That's not going to make him happy. He's no. going to be more mad. Or he, he should, should be. be, but he isn't he be for like, some you, reason. You don't even... Like, like, no, you weren't even around. You were an antagonist. You that tried to fought. kill me. You weren't, like, part of the family, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> He's like, no, I am. No, I am. I you named felt the you daughter. Were. You hurt us and attacked us and hurt other people. Yeah, oh, that's right. I'm definitely part of the family. No, I am part of the family, though. They, they have like a heart to heart where you know Doom tries to convince Thing that he's a good guy now, and Thing's like, like "Hey, I got, I got your rocks put back on you." Yeah, right. And he goes, "Hey, man, like, so was that really your mom?" And he goes, "I, I don't know, man." <laughs> well, and and he fair. tries to talk to Thing where he's like, you know, like I guess Doom felt vulnerable in that moment because right. like, he was he he displayed some measure of humanity. So he he stops himself and then he walks out the door, and he goes, "Hey, so um." Let's reference another thing that's happening right now, which is that since the Fantastic Four are gone and the Baxter building is no longer occupied, uh, people tried to take it over. And so at this point in Spider-Man, Peter Parker became a millionaire or billionaire mm. Mm. and created Parker Industries. And actually it was more like Octor Dr. Octopus created Dr. Parker Industries. Yeah. But Peter inherited it and so now he's like trying to run it. And he picked up the Baxter building and turned it into the new headquarters of Parker Industries. 
So uh. that's happening, and Doom's like, did you see what that idiot Peter Parker did with our <laughs> beloved Baxter building? It's like, you tried to fire it into space. Yeah, he's trying that to blow was, up that building. That was what I wanted to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Who's this guy? Right. <laughs> no, he's mad because it's like, they're dead, and it's like... That should yeah. be like a... That should be a monument, or yeah. it should be, you know, whatever. He's like, I'll, I'll, don't worry, Ben, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to fix it. And he goes, please don't, leave it alone. Stop. Don't. What, don't don't be not, a weirdo. You're not part... Of this family. Of this. Yeah. That's Part of the family. You got it. Spider-Man's more of a member of this family than you are. And I am also a member of this family. And me. Uh, but also, it's cute because in the Spider-Man comic that they're referencing, you know, Johnny Storm is pissed that Peter bought it. Mm. And so he goes in there and attacks Peter. What? Peter's like, I bought it so no one else would. I'm keeping it warm for when they come home. Like, Aww. when they get yeah. back, it's yours, yeah. you dumbass. You want some, like, faceless corporation yeah, to th buy they're it? They're not going to give it up. It's not just going to sit here. Yeah, yeah, no. Like There's taxes and stuff to be paid. Exactly. And gone. What? Like, what if Wilson Fisk buys it? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, no. Like, I bought it. I'm, I'm, I'm parking it. Yeah. Who, who else should That's have it? I'll sell Parker. it to whoever you think should buy it. Exactly. Who do you think should buy it? Right. What's your bright idea? What, what, actually, Nothing? No, you know what? How about, <laughs> I'll sell it to you. How much money you got? Do you Dip know how shit? to run a building? Please. You know anything? I mean, he doesn't either, but like, he, he gets money. He's a genius. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. But it's a cute moment that I really appreciated. <laughs> and then, uh... But it's not in this book. Uh, no, it's not. But it is referenced, casually referenced. Kind of, yeah. So, Doom gets into an elevator and leaves, and Ben's like, That's weird. And so, when he turns around, Reed Richards is sitting at his dinner table. Reed Richards. Or Alex Malie's version of Reed Richards. Don't look anything like him. But he's speaking with all caps. <laughs> oh, so it's not the maker. No. And so Ben and Reed talk. But not until... We... Riri Williams mm -hmm. goes to Latveria to check things out. So the she goes to Latveria. She bumps into Doom. And she's like, hey, I'm here to like arrest you or whatever or something. I don't know. <laughs> and the holographic ghost of Tony Stark is in her armor being like, hey, uh... He's doomed, he could beat you, so just just leave, don't do this. Yeah. And she's like, you can't be Iron Man, I'm Iron Man. Mm. And uh, she call spider herself? people there are. Right, exactly. <laughs> she doesn't call herself Iron Man, she just is the Iron person in, 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 in this. What does she call herself? Right now she calls herself, she doesn't call herself fucking anything. <laughs> Until they come up with Iron Heart. Ah, okay. But that's later. That is later. Now she's just, there. <laughs> I guess she's just Riri Williams. Yes. So then Reed Richards is telling Ben Grimm a story to establish that he is really Reed Richards. And it's a story that he would ne that he actually did tell Sue, but mm. in the context of the story that is completely made up by Bendis. Uh, where right. like Johnny and Reed and, and Ben were like at some restaurant one time at like three in the morning having pizza and they bumped into these gorgeous women and the women like recognized them and all three of them like really just wanted to enjoy being celebrities for a minute and so they just basked in their celebrity and let these women flaunt over them. And then Reed of course went home and told Sue about it immediately and like Ben was really mad about it. And he's like, I, I just want you to know that it's really me so I'll tell you this really embarrassing or weird or just complicated story about us that would show you that it's really me. And Reed's like, you have to kill Dr. Doom at all costs. I can't explain any more than that, but you have to kill Doom. All right, bye. What? This is what Bendis does. Bendis loves to do these moments where like, characters will sit down. They will tell a deeply intimate story about themselves or about each other, or they'll reveal something vulnerable about themselves. Then they'll say something that is like really insane or provocative. <laughs> and then they'll leave. They'll walk out of the And then frame. the character will be like, what? And then they'll talk to another character and that character will say, what that character said to you was insane. And then they'll both go, right? And then nothing will come of it. And that's what happens in this. Would there be any explanation for why that happened? Kind of. Like why he couldn't say why? Yeah, Cause, kind of. Because it's like, if you were Reed, you would just tell me. Yes. Like why? Right, like I'm your best friend, you would just tell me. Yeah. Uh, so Doom and Riri chat, and Doom explains to Riri through a very complicated and unnecessary analogy about walkabouts that uh, he saw a vision when he was embroiled in a fight with uh, the wizard. And so he's like, I need you to hit me as hard as you can. And so she shoots him and it triggers like a sense like overload. 
and then he sees the vision again and he's like now in the like in this reality that's like trying to cross over and speak to him uh -huh. and so what he turns out is seeing is a vision of New York in the future and then what looks like Doctor Strange starts floating over to him, but it's not Doctor Strange, it's the Sorcerer Supreme of the future, Tony Stark. What? So in other books, Bendis is really trying to make future Tony Stark, Sorcerer Supreme work. What? Like he is what? constantly pitching this idea of like an old Tony Stark who has become the Sorcerer Supreme, and that's the whole idea. <laughs> And he has Why? been pitching this throughout his run since Secret Wars. I don't know because it never goes anywhere. It's just a thing he wants to see happen. Why would Tony Stark want well, to see, be? Doesn't that provoke you? Doesn't that he's make a you- a man of science, isn't that crazy? Yeah, right? He would never believe in magic, but now he's the Sorcerer Supreme. Like what a character change. You know, it's, it's, it is lazy. <laughs> Because it is like, it, it is scraping the surface of an idea, but it never actually is one. You know, like if you wanted to be creative, just use Doctor Strange. But I'm not talking about Doctor Strange because right. arguably they don't care about that Yeah, character. but this is an Iron Man. Yeah, but they have, yes. those, these two have a history. Yes. I mean, so does Tony and, and Doom. I but like, get that, but, but like. But lamer. But you're already talking about his mom. You might as well bring actual Steve into the mix yes. here because it makes more sense. And don't worry, he will. Oh. That I didn't remember. This this moment I remember. Yeah. This was the moment I remembered indeed. Because uh -huh. you were like, right? <clears throat> right? Yeah, that was when I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Is it because Tony is obsessed and driven enough to like do the work to become Sorcerer Supreme? I guess so. I mean, like that and is- I'm sure he'd say something like hand wave you or it's just like, it really wasn't very hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, that's only because that would be a Bendis line. It'd be so cute for him to say that. Mm -hmm. But he never says, he never really talks about it in this. And like, and you don't just, by the way, you don't just study and then go like, <laughs> okay, well, I checked all the boxes. I'm Sorcerer Supreme. You're selected by the Vashanti. Yeah. Which yeah. means well, that there must have been literally no one left. Right. Yeah. Well, you well, know, Steven yeah. died. All right. In this alternate view or this Probably. future. Probably. But you know what and I mean? Doom like, wasn't worthy, and uh, yeah. so there you go. And all the other match characters weren't around. No. Yeah. Well, no, they were, and Tony well, Stark Strange somehow wasn't... managed to be the most worthy. <laughs> Doctor Strange wasn't magic until he was. Exactly. You know, he was a doctor. Yeah, right? But he was he didn't become Sorcerer Supreme until after he had studied. Yeah. yeah. And, well, maybe Tony... And he proved himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe the Tony chose him. gets a bug under his butt to yeah. learn magic, and then that all happens to him, too. Right? And by the way... <laughs> He should mention the Vashanti in this because if Bendis did in fact read Triumph and Torment, there's are... a scene at the beginning in which the Vashanti call forth all these magic users to pick the I Sorcerer know. Supreme. Including Morty Fleischman. <laughs> this would have been a good time to reference that. Yes, but yeah, no. but no. Okay. No, instead, future Tony Stark, Sorcerer Supreme is like, you can't be Iron Man. And he's like, why? And he's like, because they're coming after you. And he's like, who? And then he's like, oh, and then he disappears. They? Because Bendis clearly went to the J.J. Abrams school of writing. <laughs> so then right. uh, he he is sent back to now. Riri's like, that's weird. And then he passes out. Okay. Riri then arrests him and brings him to S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> For, For like the reason? fourth time. Because he's Dr. Doom. So right, then he's under arrest. So has she not been paying attention to anything that's been going on? Does like is there like some sort of well, she's weird new. She's news still, she's just brand blackout across I, the globe. That right. Allow a Doctor Doom to know about what's happening in Liberia or <laughs> anything. The fact that Doom's been good because there's like literally no way people haven't seen him like floating around doing certain. There's things. a moment where children like film him on their phone. Yeah, but beating a bad guy. Last time he was with Shield. They were like, I don't care how good you are, I'm still arresting you. Yes. And then he fled. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like they still want to arrest him. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a weird reaction. I know. I like, agree. What, Everyone in this book is charges? insane. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, why do you care? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess. So the presumably thing goes to that pizzeria that was referenced in the story. Ah. Uh, and he calls Johnny and Johnny and Ben catch up. Ben tells Johnny the story. Can he taste things? Yeah, he has a tongue. But is it like a rocky tongue? No, it's just a regular <laughs> tongue. You've seen his pictures of the His interior isn't rocky. Yeah, no, it's all flesh exterior. on the inside. So if his mouth was open, you could like shoot him in the mouth. You could, Wouldn't that yeah. be like, what if you, <laughs> his eyes. But like, you know, like if you bite your tongue, it hurts really badly. Yeah. What if his like lips closed down? <laughs> well, his tongue is just, it's proportionately durable. Oh, oh it is. I but would it's assume. not a rock. It's not a rock. 
It's a rock lobster. Uh... <laughs> anyway, Ben talks to Johnny, tells him about Reed being in his apartment, and he's like, there's no way that's Reed. And he's like, oh, okay, thank you. All right, good. Right. Anyway, I'm really sorry. I, I missed them too. And Johnny's like, I don't want to talk about it. I got to go. Isn't it been more fun if that restaurant did not have that A grade? If it had a lesser grade? Yeah, if it was like a C. And they're like, uh, it's still the best. No, it's funny because in the story that Reed recounts, Ben thinks it's great, but Reed thinks it's disgusting. So, this place so should, like, yes. It should be like C. I know. And Ben's like, it's, I love it. And it's really sad. There's a moment where Johnny's just like, I just want to see my, I just want to be with my family and go home. Mm. And I'm like, I can imagine how that must feel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so he flies away. He's like, I just got to go. Get away from me, Ben. So they leave. Where's then, he hanging out right now? Right, Johnny? He yeah. was saying, hanging out with the Inhumans, but they just broke up, so he just left. So uh, he's kind of like in between homeless. homes, yeah. Yeesh. He's just working it out. He can go hang out with Peter. I know he should, but he doesn't. Yeah. So like, no! Ben gets a call <laughs> that Doom's in custody, and while Doom's in custody, a contingent of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are like, we should assassinate Doom. So they're gonna go do that. He's too dangerous to be kept alive. That's right. So Sharon Carter proceeds to tell Riri, like, you're gonna be the most famous person in the world because you arrested Doctor Doom, and we're gonna tell the world that you did that, and so it's gonna be a good collar for you. Well, they're gonna spread her legend. That's right. So then Ben goes to talk to Doom while Riri leaves because she doesn't need to be in the book anymore. So the contingent goes to assassinate Doom after, like, attacking the guards posted to protect him. Then the ringleader of the, you know, insurrectionists, <laughs> Uh, murders the rest of her crew, uh, revealing that actually Cynthia had possessed her and then forced her to kill her comrades. Oh. Uh, and then reveals herself, uh, and she fights everybody, and then frees Doom and sinks the helicarrier in the Hudson. Oh. A whole helicarrier? Yep. There isn't a major Bend story around that doesn't also crash a helicarrier. So Doom, it's like, it's like the Enterprise. Yeah, it's going down. Only in the Kelvin timeline. So Doom awakens in Cynthia's Bordeaux or whatever, in between realities or something, and uh, she proceeds to tell him that like all must be revealed. Uh, Doom mm -hmm. then has a flashback to when he was a boy and Cynthia bade him join her in her Wiccan practices. She captures a rabbit and gives him a dagger and is like, you need to spill the blood of this rabbit and make a thing and we'll do a stuff. <laughs> and she's like, do it. And he's like, I don't want to kill a rabbit. And she's like, you're a coward. So then he awakens, Yikes. faced with his mother, and they chat. And she proceeds to teach him a couple of neat new magic spells. She's like, you're just literally the biggest disappointment of my life. Yeah. And if I had another child. They'd be better. They'd be better. And I'm, st okay, I don't yeah. want to put it into the universe, but like, I'm so surprised they haven't done that. Doom's but, like, secret Doom's sister? Doom's secret sibling. Who's going to be the rabbit that he, his mom's going to want him to kill? Oh my God. Yeah, where's the rabbit? No. No? No. Then, why then what was the point of that? There is a point. At least there is. <laughs> okay. okay. It's actually a Terminator 2 reference. So uh, they proceed well, to- I know, no, I know now why you kill rabbits. No, 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 no. You'll see, you'll see. So- <laughs> But it's something I could never do. <laughs> <laughs> so they're meditating and he begs her to teach him new tricks. Like, teach me some new spells. And the ways of the spells. force. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Ben goes back to Latveria. Why? Because Doom was there and maybe they'll give him some ideas. Mm. And he bumps into a child who is like, Doom will return and make things better for us. And he's like, that's weird. So okay. while he's in there, he like searches the grounds and he's looking around. And uh, he finds a photo from when they were college, you know, undergrads. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh my God. Like, he kept a picture of the three of us. He really does think we're family. Yeah. And it's funny because it's a picture where, like, <laughs> Doom's in the background. Like, it's not mm. like a picture of them. It's a picture right. of Ben and Reed and Doom is in the background. Hmm. But it's the only photo of the, of the three of That's them. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm an outcast among you. That's so, my that's face. like, <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's like. Weird. Insanity sad. and, and it's just sad. Very sad. It's very sad. Yeah, it's really just, sad. Yeah, well it's like, that's the only picture I have. Yeah. So uh, Doom is being taught these new spells by Cynthia and he's like, wow, we've come a long way from killing frogs in the woods, right? She goes, you know, I was thinking the same thing. And he's like, it's rabbits. Oh, it's not her. And she goes, oh. That oh that's a Terminator reference. Okay. Yeah. Uh, What's wrong with Wolfie? I can hear him barking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she goes, oh, well, yeah, you got, you got me. me. Is it Mephisto? 
Is it Mephisto? <laughs> Mephisto? Why would Mephisto be in this book? Why so, not? Why would? It, why anything? Because if Bendis is doing the right thing, right, it should be that Mephisto is mad. That's like Doom and Strange took Cynthia's soul yeah. away from him. Yeah. Well, because the there's like one out. Because they had like a thing where like every year Doom had an opportunity to fight Mephisto for her soul, and then like would lose every time until one time he called Doctor Strange. She literally asks him like, "What are you doing?" Right. Like, Why are you being yeah, the influence like, Iron Man? She has him like, "What is this book for?" <laughs> What, yes. what, what, you're, you're just right. wandering around. Yeah, it's like, like, it, it looks uncoordinated, like you have no plan, but like there must be a plan. Yes. Bendis. Right. So like, what is it? Is that like, it's like Bendis' self, subconscious coming well, out, like being like, you have to understand. what are you doing, man? Or he's just like, look, I know that this is weird and it's not going anywhere, okay? I'm acknowledging it in the book, so it's yes. okay. So you can get mad at me, actually, it's meta. <laughs> you, I'm actually, I'm actually, oh, the, I'm a genius. The worst is the oh. end, and we'll get to the end in a minute, but uh, he's blasted out from whence he came and he lands in Latveria and he's like, oh my God, Ben, they're after me. So then uh, he gets arrested by Shield again. This time they're in Project Pegasus, which is in New York. They're in like some kind of like secret bunker. Uh, they call Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange shows up and he's wearing his Jason Aaron costume Yay. and he's like, "Hey, what's okay. up?" And they're like, "Hey." Uh, now, admittedly, when is this happening? I don't <laughs> know. Have has magic already gone? Well, but. Doom sure is using a lot of it. <laughs> I guess this is happening before that. Sure. So uh, Doom asked for Strange. He's in like this kind of weird bank vault cell. And he's like, hey, Doom, what's up? And he's like, hey, Steve. Just like, I'm freaking out, man. My mom and blah, and it's a real problem. So he's like, oh, your mom? Okay, I'm sorry. All right, let, I won't treat you as a hostile. Let's just chat. So Strange attempts to convince Doom that they are going, that they are going to combine their powers to figure out what's going on. But really, it's a distraction that Strange conjures to get Doom to just talk to him about how he's feeling. Hmm. And while that's happening- uh, <laughs> That's Reed, really sad and sweet. And Doom is mad about it. He's like, no, you said you were gonna help me. And he's like, I am I helping, am helping uh, you. So uh, while, they're, while they're talking in like the, the mindscape, uh, the maker shows up on the deck of the Project Pegasus location. And he's like, hi, I'm here. Uh, I'm Reed Richards. I used to be on the Fantastic Four. And uh, and they're like, oh, nope, you're not. And they, so they start firing at him. And uh, he stretches out. He uses his powers. Yeah. What? And uh, he's just like, hey, I'm here to I'm here to help you with your with your Von Doom problem. Mm. And so Richards is talking to Sharon. He refers to her and the rest of them as humans, which tips her off. And he's like, oh, sorry, nah, yeah. And so then he explodes into fire and... Uh, oh, he can do that? Yep, because he's not really Reed Richards. Well, yeah, but he is the maker who is Reed Richards. But he's right? not the maker He's either. not the maker. <gasps> oh, what? what? So while he is burst in flames and attacking Sharon and the Thing and a bunch of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, uh, Doom realizes while talking to Doctor Strange who his true enemy of this story is, and it's Mephisto. So yes. <laughs> No, it was Mephisto. And Mephisto's though. like, why would Hello? you? Oh, oh, it's me. Oh, no. I've been doing this whole thing for no good reason. And he's like, it took me eight issues to get no, Doctor Strange. 11 and, issues. It took 11 issues to get Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom together. So here we go. Yeah. And then the last issue happens. And it is the worst issue that Bendis has ever written in his career. Oh, that sucks. God. Because this is damn almost it. like supposed to be like a little sequel or homage yeah. to Avatar Man. You're just gonna like phone it in. Yeah. Doom and Strange go to face Mephisto, and they like blast him with their magic that they can't access because the magic died. And so while they're doing that, uh, Mephisto gets hit in the face, and then he freezes time, and then he talks to the reader. Oh my god, I remember this. And he says, can you believe these guys? Hi, I'm Mephisto. You might remember me from such stories as Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, Triumph, and Torment. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something a little bit about what I did. Oh I made up Cynthia, and I pretended to be Reed Richards. And why I did that? Because I'm petty. And I didn't like how Triumph and Torment ended. And so I'm doing this to get back at Doom. There's an interesting idea and it fittingly isn't in the 12th issue. On the very last page when Mephisto is explaining, like, very briefly. Yes. He says that, like, I, 
I'm not gonna let you redeem your soul. Yes. Because like the one thing I had after you beat me was that like at least I get you when you die. Exactly. Because you're not going to hell. I forgot about that. Yeah. No, yeah. that is a very crucial reasoning for why he does it, and it's and it's understandable. Yeah. And it also sets up a potential for like a triumph and torment too, yeah. well, where it's like the inverse of it. And it's like set up by the story because yes. he is trying to be a good guy. Right. So like, oh, that is something that like would naturally lead to Mephisto. Exactly. Like, but it doesn't like explain why he impersonated no, the maker no. or why he like, provoked the thing. Right. Or why he- yeah, Why specifically it was the maker and not just Richards? Right. Like, I knew that if I like impersonated his mom or con what essentially I did was I conjured like a, a, an artifact that pretended to be his mom, but it believed it was his mom so bad that it actually tried to help him out, which is why I had to unmake her and everything. And that will haunt him for the rest of his days. So I kind of win. Oh, by the way, the spells they're conjuring, like it's not like in the movies and stuff where like there's a big drawn out fight. Sometimes if you're dealing with people like the Sorcerer Supreme or a would-be Sorcerer Supreme or both of them at the same time, they can conjure a spell that would uh, cast me to the four winds immediately. So I had to freeze time to spend the rest of the issue talking to you directly and ex explain to you what the last 11 issues were all about and what they were for. And what they were for was nothing. Uh, it was just Mephisto fucking with them the whole time. What? Get fucked. Yep. That sucks. So then they do, or rather Doom does, because Doctor Strange gets put aside so that Doctor Doom can defeat Mephisto single-handedly, which he does, and then casts away Mephisto, and then as Mephisto is banished, Cynthia's form disappears, and Doom is sad. Doom is like, all right, I'm gonna go bring you that Hydra Island I talked about, and- I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. Yeah, and Sharon way. Carter is like- You're going to jail. No, no, sh <laughs> I wish. No, Sharon Carter is like, we can't stop you, so I guess you're a superhero now. Welcome to the Avengers. She doesn't say that, but he does join the Avengers later. <laughs> She's like, well, you just defeated the devil. I guess I'm not gonna try to arrest you. It's just not yes. gonna work out for us. Yes, And so uh, we then wrap things up with Pereira. Remember her? Oh yeah. So she went to the doctor, and the doctor reveals that she's pregnant with Doctor Doom's baby. What? Yeah. yeah. But they didn't bang. But they did. When? At some point in between time. Maybe he took her to Amsterdam, banged her all over the apartment, and then left it to the thing. And he's like, hey thing, take a nap on that bed over there. You, you know, the bed that I banged on. Like, I, I don't know. There's no explanation for it. And what's worse is, then Ben is like, well anyway, I'm gonna go ruin Superman. And so, <laughs> that's it. And I'm like, what happened to that baby? What are they gonna do with that Doom baby? And, uh, I guess it doesn't get born. Oh uh, no! Chris Cantwell brings it up in his Doctor Doom book. He does a whole other solo book about Doctor Doom just being basically a send up of Putin. And <laughs> there's a story, the literally there's one panel where someone says, I heard something about uh, uh, Amara Pereira being uh, knocked up with Doom's child. What happened to that? And someone goes, it didn't come to term. <laughs> Next panel, moving on, never addressed again. Yeah, because what else are you going to do with that? Well, what are you going to do with it? They could have just said it wasn't his baby. Yeah. yeah. But then it like, has to be no, Tony Stark's baby because she was the other person that she like went on dates with. Oh, like she couldn't have been seeing yeah, someone she could have. Well, and like there aren't a thousand else? Stark babies all over the Marvel Universe. <laughs> no, it's, it, no. Instead, <sighs> And it's a mutant. I mean, oh, and then she could just be like, no, it isn't. They're like, what? Yes. What? <laughs> and then that. Oh, he flips yeah. onto Xavier's radar, and she, he's like, you don't exist anymore. You think you're a sheep now. <laughs> you like science so much, maybe they'll clone you, Dolly. Meh. <laughs> what, do they do anything with that? With her invention? No! Her? Okay. No! The only time she really ever comes up again is in that one panel in that one Doctor Doom book. Right. I mean, there's a thousand yeah, ways to explain Orcus it away. Yeah, I could be using that right now. Yeah, they could. Mm. But... Moira yeah, McTaggart but... also invented the cure for mutants. Oh, yeah. Now, with that being said, maybe it's the same cure and they both arrived at it at different right, points. Right, it's just a natural yeah. thing. You yeah. Can, multiple people. Which also is like a real problem. It. Like, if that means, it means there's a natural cause that you could just stumble upon, like yeah. penicillin. Like, yeah, like it's just a fungus. <laughs> like, oh just yeah, a species no. Of fungus. Then, then that means that you are not God's gift to humanity. <laughs> if like, you just have like a disease Doctor, like, or something. This... So, Sucks. This, this sucks. Is, this, is, this, is, this is like, this started out, I was kind of- it, it was, was, it's, listen, when you're reading it, like, it's that, a fun character study for a little I remember that while. one mm. issue yeah. where- Mephisto shows where up. Where Tony is, no. Oh. oh. 
I remember that. And then when you were talking about it, I remember you being mad about the final <laughs> issue of this. Yeah, because... I actually remember Sal being mad more than I remember the actual issue Well, because, like, how dare you? How dare you end this whole book that was setting up Doom and taking a snail's pace to do it yeah. with a goddamn fourth wall break by Mephisto, something he never does, nor does he ever do again... Because what are you doing? This is like Animal Man. Triumph and Torment is like a really like treasured story for yes. me. I really like that story a lot. You know, it's, it's mostly Doom's book. I love like their relationship that they build in that. I love that character study of Doctor Doom. Yeah. And like you get a little bit of his humanity. Like he wasn't always like the worst guy ever. Exactly. And I'm like, that's really cool. And you're like, I'm going to do an unofficial sequel to that. Yep. No, and it's going to be really and, weird and disappointing. And you're, you're welcome. Was this the plan? No. How there could is this no have been way. The plan? No, he was he he shat the bed. He took a deuce on the carpet. Like he deliberately sabotaged his own book. But then what was the plan? You'll or never know. There... Or there wasn't one. Yeah, this, he's just I mean, like uh, reads... dub, 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 I guess it was. Oh look, there are there are celebrated comic book writers who write themselves deliberately into corners and then try and write themselves out of it month to month. Right. So I would not be the least bit surprised if he was going book to book. Yeah. But there was no plan. He probably had some idea that it was Mephisto, but he probably didn't intend for him to end it with a monologue at the reader. And right. And like, uh, I'm out of time. Can you imagine? And there's no real way to story naturally like explain it. Yeah. Like, at the end of Endgame, like, <laughs> Thanos just turns to the viewer and goes like, they're defeating me. But uh, let me explain to you what I was all about and why. Well, it wouldn't need to because it would have been. It was clear through the narrative what was going on. <laughs> That's true. It wasn't structured it was just, like a mystery. Yeah, only for them to go. Oh wait, I need for that to pay off. Um, <laughs> what if I had the murderer just walk around the room and explain to Holmes why he did it? <laughs> yeah, Ugh. that's what it's like. It's like a Sherlock Holmes book. I mean, Sherlock Holmes is already hacky enough yes. like that, but at least the bad guy isn't the one who figures it out. You at least get the satisfaction <laughs> of, of the, the hero, hero figuring, it, figuring out. it out. No, but don't you, didn't you remember when Doctor Strange what? and Doctor Doom were sitting yes. there and go out of nowhere, oh yeah, <laughs> I don't hate it, but the ending is unforgivable. Yeah. No, I, I like, I do like the I, I, the examination of Doom becoming a good guy and yes. trying to tie in the Triumph and Torment, one of his better moments of like- Of heroism? Of heroism or like- Or selflessness. Of humanity. Yes. Yeah. Does Mephisto know. even reference the fact that in the future, Tony Stark- No. So what's the point of that? What's the point of that? Setting up more crap. Like, you know that Tony Stark oh, scene came yeah. in before Bendis was planning on leaving Marvel. Like. And it's just like, uh, and, and you know, if I were to like delve into it a little more, I'd think like, maybe that really was the maker originally. Yeah. And that Mephisto was Cynthia. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Right. Yeah. But no, Cynthia is the construct and Mephisto is the maker. And it's like, that would be more fun because then it's like, no, the maker's being taken for a ride because there's no ultimate Mephisto. You know, mm -hmm. he's right. just kind of like, I don't know, I'm just hooking up with this like magic chick because she can be used to do what I want to do, and she's which is something high. else. And like, uh, you know, add a bonus. But like, then for him to go, oh my God, I was banging the devil the whole time. You know, it's like, yes you were, you stretchy man. Uh. <laughs> like that would have been great. Even yeah. like, oh no. Yeah, and like, I don't care about you. Right, uh, yeah, what? You're, you're, you're literally interdimensional trash to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would have been interesting and fun. What about Reed? What about actual <laughs> yeah, Reed? Oh, what was he, why would he warn? Right, he, right, he ben didn't. To kill. Uh, no, he didn't warn anybody. That was, that was Mephisto. That was also Mephisto? Mucking with the thing. Why? Yeah. Why, why indeed? Why? why would he want him to kill him? He wants to do it himself. I know. Supremely disappointing. It's an okay concept. It's Ooh. a concept that in the beginning of the episode, we admittedly were like, that doesn't really hold water. And it's like, oh, maybe it does. And then it's the end, it's like, no, it doesn't. You know, I'm reading these quotes. You were right the whole time. <laughs> I'm reading the quotes on these. Like the first volume, it's like intriguing, involving, and a lot of fun. I'm Not like, wrong. I'm like, yeah. you could say that. You yeah. could definitely right, say right? that. Right, right. On the well back, earned. it says a drastically different take on Doom, but one mm -hmm. that honors the past and plays to Brian Bendis' storytelling straight. That's volume one. Can I go with that? Okay. Yep. Agreed. Volume two, the artwork from Malieve and Hollingsworth <laughs> continues to impress. It does. It does, and, and then, it does. who could lie like this? A great piece of art and writing. Mm. 
Well, but that's such a lame quote, too. Yeah, that's the... Yeah. Like, if I saw that, I'd be like, uh, it doesn't sound like you liked it that much. A book with words and pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah. You are a, technically correct. A story about Doctor Doom. <laughs> a story that features characters that I like. Thanks. Could you try a little harder? Sell it a little better? It was good. There we go. All yeah. right, thank you. This book has lots of panels. <laughs> yeah, it does. And things happen in them. Yeah. A story from beginning to end. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Entirely disappointing. <laughs> That's, That's the cool. cover quote. Entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time with an all new episode of Backish. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. Is there a no words version? Of <laughs> That's the question. Just a question. Yeah, there could be, but then you'd get to this part and where, go, "What the fuck?" <laughs> where he's just looking he's at the looking camera. He's looking at you the whole time. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's just happening. Just him literally going. <laughs> just him emoting. Just yeah. doing. Mm -mm. Those are his headshots. Yeah. <laughs> look at my range. <laughs> like, look, you can't get anything no. from this. <laughs> All these fucking words. That sucks. And it's it's like the artist was like, also like, I'm not doing. I'm not doing one picture the whole time. Yeah. I'm gonna draw. Well, different... I'm gonna draw different stuff, but it's gonna look the same though. Right. Partly because he didn't give me anything. Yeah.